2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Now Paul is writing this letter to Timothy. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. Here's one that surprised me. Disobedient to parents. Parents, if you allow your children to be disobedient, you're allowing them to sin. If you allow them to sass you, talk back to you, mom and dad, you could be responsible for your young person going to hell. Don't listen to society when they tell you don't spank your children. That's what's wrong with this generation now. They didn't get their bottom spanked when they were younger. As God spoke to my heart many years ago, when do you bend the tree? And the answer was when it's young. If you don't bend the children in the right way that they ought to go, when they're young, they will grow up wild. They will sow wild oats, and then they will reap, and your heart will be broken. Just yesterday, here in Rutland, Vermont, a 33-year-old young man, I don't know why I was running from the police, he wrecked his car, and it was less than one mile from our apartment. He ran from the car into McDonald's, and the police chased after him. I don't know the details, but the word came out that the police shot and killed a 33-year-old young man in McDonald's less than a mile from our apartment. What was he running from? I don't know, but we are living in perilous times, which means times of danger. Paul says this is what we need to look for. They're going to be boasters, proud, blasphemers disobedient to parents, unthankful, meaning how many people do you think today they feel entitled, they feel like the world owes them things, they feel like the family owes them something, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections. The Bible says God created them male and female, and if it's any other arrangement, the Bible says it is not natural. It is an abomination unto God, and people who live that lifestyle cannot, will not go to heaven. Do you hear me today? If you're not living like the Bible says, you're not going to heaven. There's only one other place to go. Without natural affections, truth breakers, false accusers, liars. The Bible says liars shall have their place in the lake of fire. If you can't tell the truth, keep your mouth shut. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. People that are good are talked about badly. Traitors. Right now, America is filled, our government is filled with traitors. They have betrayed the American people because people have bought them giving them large sums of money and they think they're going to escape. I want to tell you something. The Bible tells us that God is going to expose the evil and they're going to suffer for what they've done. We will suffer now for a season, but they will suffer forever if they don't repent. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. How do you think you're going to feel when you stand before God and He says, I was hungry and you fed me not. I was cold and you didn't help me with a blanket or something to put on my body to keep me warm. I was sick and you didn't even visit me. And the Pharisees looked at Him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry, thirsty, naked or cold? And here's what Jesus said, such as you do unto the least of these, my brethren, you've done it unto me. Some of you can't help the poor because you're paying a cable TV bill. You're paying an internet bill. You're paying a cell phone bill. You're paying five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars a pack for cigarettes. And you can't afford to do the work of God. I want to tell you something. There's coming a day. You're going to give an account for God when he says that people become lovers of themselves. In other words, you think more of you than the souls of men. People, Paul warned, would be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Glued to the movie channels, video games, get out of it. Stop it. Ask God to set you free. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 5, Paul writes, these kind of people having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. In other words, they're religious. They can quote some scripture. They might even go to church with you. The church is full of it. The buildings that you call the church are full of hypocrites and Pharisees. No wonder 
people aren't getting saved. No wonder people aren't being healed. No wonder people aren't being filled with the power of the Holy Ghost because the buildings they call the church is so corrupted, compromised, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says, from such, turn away. In other words, you don't need to be going to one of those buildings where they deny the power of God. Pastor sits on a stool in front of the church and gives you a 20 minute book report on scripture. Get out of there. Run, run, run to the grace of God in your prayer closet. God is omnipresent. He can be where you are. You don't have to go to a building. Matter of fact, he pulled me and Gail out of the building. I remember one day I looked at Gail and I said, Gail, we are too comfortable here. We are just too comfortable when they sing a song and say a prayer and take an offering and sing another song. And they've got a beautiful choir and some of them in choir room. Then the preacher gets up and gives a little sermon and then they announce a benediction. And you go home, but you have not been changed. You have not been healed. You were not delivered. You were not set free. You went home with the burdens you brought with you when you come. Because there's no power of God in that church. There's no anointing of the Holy Ghost in that church. There's not even the presence of the Lord in that place. Can't you tell? Wake up. Get out. Seek God at the foot of your bed. Seek God in your basement. Seek God while sitting in the car, sitting in the driveway, sitting in the parking lot somewhere. He's omnipresent. He wants to hear from you. Maybe one day you'll get tired of all this make-believe and you'll go to the Lord Himself and quit expecting people to do it for you. Verse 6, Paul says, For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. Ever learning here, verse 7, talks about a lot of preachers. Look at it. 2 Timothy 3 and 7, Paul says, Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. In other words, and you know it and I know it, these preachers pat their self on the back. They've got an associate degree. They've got a bachelor's degree. They've got a master's degree in theology. And oh my goodness, if you meet some of them that's got a doctorate degree, a PhD in theology, and they think they know it all. But God says they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. I know people, you know people, they can quote scripture, but they don't know Jesus. And the Bible says, from such, turn away. Get away from them. Don't fellowship with them. Don't invite them into your house to put their feet under your table. It's wicked. It's ungodly. They're not your brother or sister. Yes, Gail, you might need to witness to them. When Jesus became a friend of sinners, he didn't leave them that way. He saved them. He healed them. He didn't let them go on. It's like I heard it said, God loves you just like you are. Cigarettes, alcohol, pornography, God loves you. But He loves you too much to leave you that way. If you invite Him in your heart, if you invite Him in His life, He will begin making changes in you and you'll stop feeling comfortable in sin. You'll stop feeling comfortable around sinners. People who deny the shed blood of Jesus is the only thing that can wash away their sin. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You deny the blood of Jesus, you're going to hell. You deny Jesus Christ, you're going to hell. You don't repent of your sins, you're going to hell. That young man yesterday at McDonald's, 33 years old, didn't know when he ran into McDonald's, he'd never leave it alive. He'd step out into eternity. I don't know where he is. I don't know who he was. I don't know his heart. That's between him and God. But I don't want to die that way. God says no man has the promise of tomorrow. Not even you. Not even me. We don't have the promise. Verse 8, Paul goes on to say, Now as Janies and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men, talking about preachers, teachers, false prophets, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. This, this, this is an encouraging word to me. Verse 9, But they shall proceed no further. There's coming a day that God's going to step out on the clouds in the form of Jesus Christ and all 
all of the evil is going to be done away with forevermore. They shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs also was. You know, people today in the government, politics, and churches are being exposed. God is seeing to it that their evil is exposed. We've got congressmen and senators who are living in sexual immorality, and I won't go into that because of the children watching. We've got politicians living in sexual sin. We've got politicians who have betrayed America and the people for a pocket full of money that they themselves are one day going to lose it. Paul says to Timothy in verse 10, But thou hast fully known my doctrine. Paul was telling Timothy, You know me, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, and patience. Timothy, you know me. But look at verse 11, 2 Timothy 3, 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured. Paul endured persecution. Jesus endured persecution. But I want you to look at verse 11. Paul says, But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Does that mean you're not going to suffer? No. Does that mean you're not going to lose house, job, family? No. Does that mean you won't die for it? No. To be delivered means to set free. There's many ways you can be set free. Paul said in verse 12, All that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. I'm going to tell you today, surprise some of you, it is ordained of God that you suffer for His name's sake. Because when people suffer, they're going to do one of two things. They're going to draw closer to God or they're going to run from God to get out of their suffering. What will you do when life becomes uncomfortable, when you lose your job? Are you willing to take the medication from the government that's poisoned and could kill you? Are you willing to take it to keep your job? Remember what Jesus said, he who saves his life will lose it. You're going to lose your life anyway. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, you're going to die anyway. Don't die by the poison of men. And I know my heart bleeds for those who've already been medicated by the government, by their poison. I pray for you. I pray that God will reverse the poison, that God will stop the poison from hurting you. However, we are all destined to die. But because you are in Christ, you'll still go to heaven. Don't let people tell you anything different. This is not the mark. Oh, it's coming. I believe with all my heart this is the steps leading to it, but it is not it. If you've received the medication from the government and you're concerned you're going to miss heaven, it's not true. You remain faithful to God. You cry out to God. And whether you die now or you die later, you're going to die. And if your heart is right with God, you've confessed your sins, you've surrendered everything you've got to Him, you're going to make heaven your home. Do you hear me? You're going to make heaven your home. And I believe those who believe differently, they believe it out of ignorance. They don't know. They're only going by what people have said. And I know I've gotten comments, well, the Lord told me. Well, not every voice is of the Lord. The Bible says, try the Spirit and see if they are of God. Remember, Satan is a great deceiver. And we're living in a day of deception. Paul said, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Listen to this, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. You see, so many people today are deceived. They're believing anything they hear or see or read. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. It's going to get worse, beloved. I'm sorry to tell you, it ain't going to get better. America's not going to be great again. You know who's not coming back and leave the country to be great again? It ain't going to happen. It's theater. It's a distraction so you won't see what's coming. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And their pockets are being filled with money. Paul says in verse 14, But continue thou in things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. In other words, what God has shown you, 
what you have learned reading his Bible, hold on to it. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. This Bible is able to make you wise. If you have a problem, read the book. Quit reading the news. Quit looking at the news. Quit listening to the news. Most of it's lies because the world outside of Christ is easily deceived. Don't you believe those Hollywood stars that are paid lots of money? Don't you believe those sports athletes that are paid lots of money to lie to you? Verse 16, some people need to underline this. All scripture, Paul said, is given by inspiration of God. In other words, the Holy Ghost told them what to write and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Did you know the Bible says that we're to admonish people? We're to reprove people? That don't mean you put your hands on anybody, no. But when they tell you something that ain't true, you need to know enough about Scripture to tell them, oh no, sir, oh no, ma'am, you're wrong. That's not true. This is the truth. And if you don't believe it, you're on your way to hell. All Scripture for correction to correct people and for instruction in righteousness. In other words, if you'll do what this book says, you'll walk in righteousness before God and have favor with God. Look at this, verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, or I want to say that the man of God may be perfected. If you'll read the book, if you'll study the book, if you'll learn the book, if you'll practice what the book says, God will use the Word of God to perfect you in His sight. Your family will always remember your past. Your family will always hold it against you, what you were one day, what you did one day, the sins you walked in, the lust. But think about this. Your family is not going to be the judge at the end. Thank you. The family's not going to be the judge. Your preacher, your church is not going to be the judge. The Democrats and the Republicans are not going to be the judge, thank God. But the righteous judge will be the judge. He is the judge. And he says that the man of God may be perfect or perfected, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And I know some people say, well, it's by faith, Brother Eddie. It's not of works lest men should boast. Oh, come on. Grow up. I know what it says. In other words, that verse is saying you're not going to get to heaven because of the works that you have done. If you make it to heaven, it's going to be because of your faith in Jesus Christ and Him alone. But the Bible says that faith will produce works. In other words, you are a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. You should be working for the glory of God because the Bible says faith without works is dead. If you're not working for the Lord, you're not doing anything that's any good for the Lord. That's not going to glor You're not glorifying God if you're not working for the Lord. Now, I know good and well not everybody's called to be a preacher. Not everybody's called to be a teacher, an apostle, a prophet. Not everybody's called to do the same thing. The Bible says some people are given the gift of the Holy Ghost, the gift of helps. God put it in you to be a helper. Some people need help. And you're called to be their helper, not to be their ruler, not to be their Lord. Remember, Jesus said the greatest among you is he who serves. Are you serving the Lord? I'll back up and ask that question a different way. Are you serving your neighbors? Are you serving your family? Do you remember before Jesus was crucified, when he had the last supper in the upper room after they ate? The Bible says that Jesus put a towel around his waist, got down on his hands and knees, and washed the disciples' feet. Back then, they were dirty. They walked around in sandals. They walked everywhere. It was dirty. Their feet were dirty. And the Bible says Jesus washed their feet. And then he told them, he said, you call me Lord. And you're right. I am your Lord. And he just got through washing their feet. But Jesus said, unless you're willing to do as I have done, unless you're willing to humble yourself, bow if you have to, and wash the feet of the saints, Jesus said, you will have no part of me. So if you're not serving, you may not be a part of Christ. Or if you're showing these highfalutin preachers in a big church wearing a $2,000 suit and you think everybody's supposed to bow down when you walk by, you have no part of Jesus. You can cover yourselves in robes and fancy hats and carry censers of smoke. You can do all of that which is idolatry. But unless you're willing to wash the feet of the believers, you shall have no part of Christ. Do you hear me? Thus saith the word of God. 
many of the people of God are going to die, but they're going to go to heaven so that they won't have to endure the judgments of God on the earth. So don't weep and mourn when a saint dies. Rejoice that they've been set free from it already. Don't have a pity party when a saint dies. Chances are it's because of what you're going to lose. You're going to lose their time, their attention, their affection, their embraces. You're crying because of what you're going to suffer because they went on. They're in a far better place. Rejoice. And he said, and again I say unto you, rejoice. Read the book. Pray and seek his face. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you'd save the lost, heal the sick, cast out devils. Father, that you would pour out your spirit on all flesh just as it is written. It is also written that he will withhold no good thing to them that walk uprightly. Father, I pray that you would give gifts of the Holy Ghost to men and women, boys and girls, that the works of God be done in these last days, that men, according to the Scripture, may look upon the works and glorify God which is in heaven in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power of the blood that washes away sins daily. Paul said, I die daily. Father, I'm believing you today to set captives free all over the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, I thank you by faith for what you have in store for those who love you, who are willing to die if need be, that we might remain faithful to you in Jesus' name.